This is a first part of a year-long course introducing you to uh, all the major ideas in physics, starting from Galileo and Newton right up to the big revolutions of the last century, which was on relativity and quantum mechanics. The target audience for this course is really very broad. In fact, uh, I've always been surprised at how broad the representation is. So I don't know what your major is. I don't know what you're going to do later. So I picked the topics that all of us in physics find fascinating. Uh, some may or may not be useful, but you just don't know. Uh, some of you are probably going to be doctors, and you don't know why I'm going to do a special relativity or quantum mechanics. But you don't know when it'll come in handy. If you're a doctor and you've got a patient who's running away from you at the speed of light, <laughs> you'll know what to do. Or if you're a pediatrician with a really small patient who will, <laughs> who will not sit still, it's because the laws of quantum mechanics don't allow an object to have a definite, cannot have a definite position and momentum. So, so these are all things you just don't know when they will come in handy. And I teach them because uh, these are the things that turned me on and got me going into physics. And whether or not you go into physics, you should certainly learn about the biggest and most interesting revolutions right up to present day physics. All right, so that's what the subject matter is going to be. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about how the course is organized. First thing is this year, it's going to be taped. You can see some people in the back with cameras. As part of an experimental pilot program funded by the Hewlett Foundation. And uh, at some point, they will decide uh, what they will do with these lectures. Most probably, they'll post them somewhere so people elsewhere can have the benefit of uh, what you have, of sitting in a Yale classroom. So I've been told that uh, from now on, we just ignore the camera and do business as usual. Uh, nothing's going to be changed. I try to negotiate a laugh track so that if the jokes don't work, we can superpose some laughter. I was told, <laughs> no, I just got to deal with it as it happens. So it's going to be, it's like one of the reality shows where things are going to be as they are. And hopefully, uh, after a while, we'll, uh, we'll learn to act and behave normally and not worry about its presence. Then, coming to the rest of the details of the course. By the way, there are more details on the website that I posted that was given to me by the university if you want to know more about what all this is about. The course organization is fairly simple. We're going to meet Monday and Wednesday in this room, uh, 11.30 to 12.45. I will give you some problems to do on Wednesday, and I'll post them on the website. So you guys should get used to going to the classes website. I'm really, really dependent on that now. I finally learned how to use it. I will use that to post information, uh, maybe once in a while send email to the whole class. So if you want to get those emails, you've got to sign up for the course because I push a button and it goes to anybody who's signed up there. The homework will be given on Wednesday, and it's due before class the following Wednesday. And uh, let me introduce you to our head TA, Mara Daniel, who's uh, recently Mara Barabbas. Right. Uh, she's, will you come a little? OK, so Mara is going to be the person who will see you after class. And she will take the problem sets that you have submitted before class, and she'll give you the graded ones from after class. OK, that will be sorted out. <laughs> will be up there. So you should drop the homework before you come into class, rather than furiously working on it during class. And the solutions will be posted uh, the same afternoon. So there is not much point in giving a homework that's late. But once in a while, you know, you come up with a reason that I just cannot argue with. You, know, you got married, or you're getting a transplant, whatever it is, <laughs> well, that's fine got a transplant, I want to see the old body part. <laughs> if you got married, I want to see your spouse. 
If something happened to a grandparent, I'm counting, and up to four, I don't get suspicious, go five, six, seven, eight, <laughs> I will have to look into the family tree. But you know, look, any reasonable excuse will be entertained. And the relative importance given to these uh, different things is 20% for your homework, 30% for the midterm, which will be sometime in October, and 50% for the final. That will be the weighted average. But I have another plan called the amnesty plan in which I also compare just your final grade, what you did in the final exam. And whichever is higher of the two is what I will take to determine your overall course grade. This is something I used to announce near the end, uh, but then some people felt that it's not fair not to know this from the beginning. So I'm telling you from the beginning, but don't don't dream and think that somehow the final is going to be so much different from your regular day-to-day -day performance, but to give you some reason to live after the midterm. So you feel uh, that is hope, I can change everything overnight. Uh, it does happen. I put that in for a reason because sometimes some of you have not taken a physics course and you don't know how to do well in physics and slowly you catch on and by the time it's final exam you crack the code, you know how to do well. As far as I'm concerned, that's just fine. If at the end of the semester you take a three-hour exam in a closed environment and you answer everything, I don't care what you did in your homework or your midterm. That's not relevant. So that's how the grading will be done. We have uh, Mara's group of TAs. She is the head TA, and she's the one you should write to whenever you have a problem. Then we also have uh, two faculty members. Uh, one is our postdoctoral fellow, Mark Caprio. Mark? Okay. So he will have a discussion section on Tuesdays between 1 and 2 in Sloan Lab. And uh, Steve Forlanetto, I don't know if Steve is here or not. There's Steve, our new assistant professor. He will have a section on Tuesday night in Dunham Lab, uh, room 220. Uh, Tuesday night is a night when you people realize homework is due on Wednesday. So we know that. So he will be there to comfort you and give you whatever help you need. All right, my own office hours, I'm not determined yet. I'll have to find out when it is good for you. I used to, you know, I live and work out of Sloan Lab up on the hill, and it was easy to have office hours before or after class, but now you have to make a special trip. So just give me a little bit of time to find out, maybe by soliciting email responses from you, what would be a good time for my office hours. But for any procedural things like, you know, this problem set was not graded properly and so on, uh, there's no point emailing me because I'm going to send it to Mara anyway. So directly deal with the powers that be. Okay, finally, I want to give you some tips on uh, how to do well in this course and what attitude you should have. First advice is you should come to the lectures. Now, it's not self-serving. It's not uh, so much for my benefit. I think... There's something useful about hearing the subject presented once orally. Secondly, the book, you can see, one of you had a book here. Uh, it's about, it's about a 1,100 pages. And when I learned physics, it was like 300 pages. Now, I look around this room. I don't see anybody whose head is three times bigger than mine. So I know that you cannot digest everything the books have. So I have to take out what I think is the really essential part and cover that in the lecture. So you come to class to find out what's in and what's not in. If you don't do that, 